I am unashamed. What about you? So, Dad, you've been a you've been a bachelor for a few days, right? Mom's mom went to visit your youngest son. Oh, is that where she? Your went? mother. Yeah, she, she went to took off to visit with. Uh, they so, were had a, an event, <coughs> Jay. So you'll know. <laughs> well, good because look, I tried to call her a dozen times yesterday because oh, yeah. it was Mother's Day. I did too, and I never got her. Never got her. The yeah, mother was down in the, you know, save the children. That uh, God, the, all God's children, all God's children, <laughs> or save the children. Yep, all God's <laughs> children. You have meant save the children. I, mean, I like that too. That's pretty one, good. One one little group. Uh, I think there was a surgeon or a doctor or two, but they came up with. Uh, they donated fifty thousand dollars toward. Ooh. Save the children if, Uh-oh. <laughs> Jace, that's where you come in, Uh-oh. <laughs> if you and I would take them duck hunting. <laughs> well, I love how everybody's <laughs> idea is to get me to do something. Well, <laughs> without my, well, Jace, no, it's, it's saving the children. Come I, on, man. <laughs> and it, it'll probably work because of that. <laughs> but I, Well, I'm telling you this because it was information. You'd like to maybe know that information before, right? Let's Just, have a talk. It was new information, but she had a series of when she left, I looked over on the right side of my chair, and she had Friday, because that's the day I was, she was leaving, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, she had a an envelope for each day stacked neatly on the right side of my chair, and I looked over there and I said, well, hmm. So every day you open a new envelope? It, yeah, I kind of thumbed through them a little bit, and I said, well, today's Thursday. She just pulled out, but on Friday, she she called me after she left. She said, you have a, some some letters I wrote you for every day that I'm not there. So the opening Friday, I waited to Friday. I opened the letter up. And I so you up. waited. You didn't. You didn't go early. And I opened it up, and it said, "Roses are red, violets are blue. There's no one I love more than you." <laughs> no, that's a classic. It's a deep, it's deep stuff. <laughs> Mom's going this with the classic. This is a creative way for her to get you to keep up with what day it is. <laughs> 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 And to show her love. Saturday came, and it was, look, we've been together 61 years. She said, with a little bungling at first, she said, we, we went through it. That was a nice way to And she that. said, uh, uh, I wouldn't trade it for a minute. She Ooh. said, uh, she said. That's good. It sounds like y'all are flourishing. Yeah. yeah. That's, You're thriving into yeah. your golden I'm, years. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a, a letter in writing every day. Yeah. That's good. I don't know what she's thinking, you know. So Mom's always about. been a note writer. She, she It's a good sign if your woman is writing it after she left, saying, you know, yeah. roses are red, violets are blue. I love you more than anybody on the earth. I mean, I, I was I was like, well. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> she just wanted you to know. And That's why I'm a man and she's a woman. A lot of people are confused on which one they are, but I've just <laughs> noticed a giant difference between men and women. Uh, and how they think. Some, some men are no writers, but my mom well, has I, always been. The... I took it for for my team this week because I asked Missy. I was like, "What you want for Mother's Day?" She's like, "Oh, well, I want to go to Tennessee, hang out with the kids." So I said, "Okay." So we're r- driving her. Uh, you know, she's my wife has never had a new vehicle. She she just she's had clunkers her whole life. I mean, she's fine with that. Yeah, she like she wants to get out every ounce of energy that any vehicle has. I mean, she just don't want to sell it. But this one she has, I don't know how many miles it had on it, but it was a lot. So what I'm saying is, the present was the trip to Tennessee, but it turned into getting her a new vehicle. Oh. I came back in in a new vehicle. You her. bought the other one in Nashville. Well, my son did for her. <laughs> using my money, <laughs> which just reminds me of how this thing got yeah, started. Exactly. We need to have another family before. meeting on when your best idea involves other family members doing something or paying for something. That's really not your idea. <laughs> well, I mean, it may be your idea, but you're not really the one back in the play. Is the is the situation? Well, so but so Mother's Day, just in case you forgot. She decided, evidently, the memo didn't get you. I'd like another vehicle. 
Well, the vehicle on her was, own, was she... breaking down, and it just, I mean, my son was like, I mean, Dad, we can't have <laughs> my mom, your wife, <laughs> driving hours at a time, putting her life in danger. I, yeah. I mean, she needs to be mother of the year. Your son that was is, the line. Your he, son is always a little bit dramatic. He's always leans toward the yeah. dramatic. I'll I'm say like, that about hey, it. Is it an electric vehicle or, no, or a fossil thing, fuel rig? No, the... That's a that's an interesting story because look here here was our first night in Tennessee, so because my other son who takes care of the farm, but I guess he's been distracted because when we got there, I was like, "Welcome to the jungle." Baby. <laughs> he's like, "Well, the lawnmower's broke." And that was different different things that Updated led. You hate, to, wow. you hate to be the caretaker and the owners show up and the stuff's broken down. So That's... me and my other son and the son whose responsibility, we spent one entire day just cleaning this this place up and getting the grass oh, mowed. Yeah. Well, my wife had has an electric vehicle that was her grandpa's. He used it on construction sites. But you got to remember, this was an electric. It was one of the first electric vehicles before electric vehicles. That didn't say it's got to be a while because he's this, been. This whole thing weighs. It looks like a little, a little truck, but it don't. It doesn't weigh, but maybe a hundred pounds. And you're going to drive around in this thing? <laughs> We've been driving around. No, you know, uh, Reed had found some tires for it that somebody had ordered once upon a time because he went to every tire place that he. Could. How often do you charge this thing up? Well. You charge you charge it up. I don't know, but here's what happened. I took it to the bottom of the hill because you got to realize I'm at the top of a hill that goes straight up, and I walked it just because I went metal detecting my neighbor's yard as soon as I got there. They they invited me to come over and see if I could find anything. But when I walked up that hill, I was like, I mean, it's all I could do to get. When I got to the top, you I was, just wheezing. I, was, I sounded like size. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Wow! Good. Whoa, Missy's Grief, like, boys. what happened? I said, I walked up that hill. <laughs> I mean, it's straight up. I don't know how far it is. but That's sucking a lot of energy out of a rig. So the next time, I took the little electrical vehicle, which, which seemed dangerous when I went down it. Because the little brakes has got, you know, you're, you're hanging on going down the hill. <laughs> so when I got it to go back up the hill, it I got right to the top of it, and the wheel started spinning. But I was going wide open. I had to pedal to the floor. And I was like, no. And so let me tell you what a scary sensation is. When you're in a little 25-year-old electrical vehicle. You're going backwards down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. I did three donuts without trying to. <laughs> going back down Ooh. on two wheels several <laughs> times. Because I tried it about four times. Because I was like, well, how do my sons get this thing up the hill? I can't. That needs to be on a commercial. This can happen with an electric vehicle. <laughs> uh, I think the Lord intervened just to keep me alive. Because, I mean, I rode it up. Because I ran off the road several times. I'm just doing donuts all the way down. And I'd go back up. Then it. That's finally, the kind of little said, blurbs they say you see on the Internet, little things like that. Well, here's what happened. The battery was charged. So for all you electrical vehicle electric vehicle enthusiasts here's here's a problem <laughs> the battery was charged but this thing has a to conserve the power at a certain level even though it's charged it goes then in, into what they call turtle mode uh, and it won't go over 10 miles an hour so even though it was charged you were if you want to charge the hill it's got to be fully charged and it wasn't fully charged so we get the new vehicle that my wife has has gotten for Mother's Day, I guess, which this thing was, I don't even know how to describe this thing. It, it's when I rode around it, it's like a spaceship. It, it's a new Jeep came out with a luxury vehicle. I can't even remember what it's called. but Oh, so it's a top-end Jeep. It's a top-end Jeep, but it looks like a Suburban. Huh. I said, I don't oh, think I've even gas seen it. Oh, is it the Wagoneer? Thing. The Wagoneer. Oh, I've seen a Wagoneer, yeah. Look, it drives itself. Uh -oh. you, you take your hand off the steering wheel. <laughs> no, it literally drives itself. <laughs> I don't, and and uh... it'll flash the lights and put your hands on the wheel. Chase, you're right on the edge of woke. 
<laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't either. So anyway, look, this story's getting long. The woke wagoneer. Yeah. So I ha- I have to go get the wagoneer. At this point, I hadn't even driven it yet. It just got there. Nobody's driven. And I said, Cole, you got go get me a chain. We're going to pull. Those are kind of hard to get a hold of, too. Breed must have, because I've talked to people. No, that yeah, that's wait, what I said. List Nobody all. can find a vehicle right now. But you can buy this one, because one, it's really expensive. And it, it doesn't get good gas mileage. Yeah, I guess. So they walked, he walked in there and he's like, Dad, I, I found it. I was like, What kind of gas mileage do you get? Because, you know, it's four or five dollars yeah. a gallon now. Terrible. And he's like, Well, look, he didn't answer the question. <laughs> he's like, No, this thing has this and that. And I was like, oh, He went car okay, sales. It, it gets crappy gas mileage. He's like, Well, it's not optimal. So anyway, he's like, but I mean, mom has never had a bit. He, he was wanting to do this for his mom. So I, I, and it was true. I went along with it. So I go get the Wagoneer. Uh, Cole comes out, no chain, no rope. I was like, Cole, this is embarrassing. You're <laughs> on a farm. You don't have any a chain. I said, because I don't have my rig. Yeah. And so we wind up doing something you're not supposed to do, which is tow a vehicle with a ratchet strap. But <laughs> the, the electric vehicle only weighed 100 pounds. So I said, I think it'll be fine. And so we we pulled. This is that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> we just did it. We pulled it up, got it where it's. Well, charged. you managed to put a redneck situation into that deal. You got a brand new wagon there, and you're you're <laughs> with a strap pulling up your electric vehicle. Well, up it was so funny. Cause, that's a redneck cause move, we right there. We tried to just pull it up, but we realized somebody had to steer this thing. And Cole said, "Well, do you want to get in it, or do you want me?" I was like, "Well, here's the situation, Cole." <laughs> If something happens to this vehicle we just bought your mom, you will you don't want to be the one driving that. <laughs> this this hill is steep. Yeah. Bad things could happen. I said, but it's more dangerous to get in the little electric vehicle and steer. Yeah, because that I mean, thing. We're holding this together. That thing breaks, you're, you're sailing off. I said, but look, somebody's got to live to tell the story. So what do you want to do? I, I put it on him. I said, because I'm prepared to be with my maker. I'd rather be in iron gears, well, that's, no buttons. That's where I, I told the last one I got, the last truck I got, I said, no buttons. I said, iron to iron, iron gear that's shift. Everything, everything we had it. had buttons. I mean, look, so I put it in low range, and I just... Yeah, I'm just at a snail's pace if I want to. That's what we did. About like this. It never even been or nothing. It'll just go That's right what on happened. the phone. Oh, this, yeah. this rig we had, it was rigged. Now, the little little electrical vehicle did get up on two wheels <laughs> one time, and I looked back at Cole, and he just had a wide-eyed look. <laughs> I said, Yeah, when the wheels are leaving the ground, you that's, that's bad. Said, lean yeah. to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put it like... Who's the most valuable in this scenario? Because you know he's we, got he's we got didn't a lot of go years down that road. Al, we went we went. Where is the more? Where's going to be the the harder thing to live with? If you tear up this fancy vehicle we just bought your mom, or well, sounds, we really wasn't worried about. The sounds other. like to me. I mean, I know there's a, must be a sentimental value to the 25 year old. It is. It thing, was her but I'm like, we might know? already get a a gas operated uh, side by side for your farm. Al, it's sentimental. That's what I said when I went up. I said, look, we need a gas operator. I said we need these type. You know, the golf carts where you you get in on hilly golf carts. Right, and, they, and they're gas up. And they're gas. I said, we need something like that. Or even the just battery, a, even a John Deere. Side the, battery, the battery technology sounds great, but so far, it's 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 not. It's not there yet. Not well, there yet. I will say, surely we've come further in 25 years. I mean, Tesla seems to have something figured out. Well, they do. So. Uh, let's take a break. Well, it's summertime. I knew that when I stepped, I'd been to Ohio, stepped off the plane and said, yep, welcome back to Louisiana. All the, the air inside the plane was, it was all condensation and it looked like a Michael Jackson video with all that coming out of the airplane. I thought, yep. Smoke. Yeah. Um, smoke. So, uh, Summer Adventures, uh, one of our sponsors uh, really specializes in this. It's a, they're called Bespoke Post. So they uh, they're going to send you stuff, and you know you get so for seasons you get different things, and so you you go onto their website 
You take a quiz. They're going to find out the kind of things you like. Each box is valued around $70, but you're only going to pay a fraction of that. So it's really good. I look forward to it every time. This is one of the things I got in my last one, which is a really cool knife uh, that I've I think I showed you guys before, but stuff like that. Cause I like knives and, you know, outside stuff. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel anytime. You're going to get 20% off your first monthly box. When you sign up at box of enter the code Phil at checkout. That's box of code Phil 20% off your first box, box of code Phil and get some summer surprises. Well, they do, but you know, you got the problem is with the at this point, and, and I'm sure they'll get better. Number one, guess where all the batteries come from? China, probably. China. Well, that could be a. So problem. you got that issue, and then guess what? They're building the batteries. With, well, guess what's powering the factories to build the batteries? Coal. So this whole thing is like <laughs> we're kind of a we're kind of chasing our tail. I mean, you're right though. The Teslas are amazing. Corey's got one. So let me tell you what we did, because then a good idea came out. We uh, we we went and played golf together, uh, me and my two sons, and that was awesome because I didn't get to play golf while we were filming this show. So my and I've played like four times. So they strapped you. That's what you would think, because I haven't. I've played four times since the six month layoff, and I hadn't broke ninety. And I I didn't even come close to breaking ninety. I, it's like I'd never played. <laughs> But they wanted to play, and uh, it was funny. Cause, they had the chip and yips. Because Missy, of course, she, we have this little baby that we're standing in the gap with, and then Brighton has our the grandbaby. first, first grandbaby. <clears throat> so Thursday, we had decided to go play golf. And so Brighton was like, well, y'all, uh, yeah, y'all enjoy the Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> and Uh-oh. Reed said, it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the week. <laughs> we it, it's so, really not meant to be a week long celebration. <laughs> we're going to do this before we pamper y'all for three days with gifts, which which was true. I mean, my wife got a new vehicle, <clears throat> and then my kids cook for everybody Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which was awesome. And uh, we invited the neighbors. They've turned out to be pretty good cooks, aren't oh, they? Oh, look. Oh, yeah. So so they had an idea. Cole's like, I've gotten to know some of the neighbors, and uh, how about we do a crawfish bowl and invite them? And that's what we did. Yeah. And and they came. And uh, it so was, You could get fresh crawfish in uh He got fer- fresh crawfish, yeah. yeah and and boil cool. them up. And, boy, he put on quite the uh, display. Of, yeah. He had shrimp. We boiled shrimp, crawfish. And he had, you know, the corn, potatoes, but he had different things in there, jalapeno peppers and Yeah. It was a, That's kind of the new thing is you put a lot of different they're doing like even veggies like Brussels sprouts and broccoli. They put them in bags and they boil them in there so you get that good crawfish boil flavor. Yeah. Uh, the you know, new there thing. Was, there was I something. started with uh jambalaya. I said, Well, the woman's gonna be gone. <laughs> How long? All right. Be gone. She put this in a note to tell you what to cook? No, they leave on Thursday and get back on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I said, five, six days. I said, I think I'll go with the jambalaya. So I made a big jambalaya. Just me was at home. So the artist came down, he and his woman, Phyllis. They ate on it some. Stone showed up. We had Jersey Joe doing mechanical stuff out here on the equipment. He was there. His son. Jersey Joe's turned into quite the hand. He he can do anything. Yep. He's Jersey an IT Joe's man. Jersey but... Joe's son is now in love with your granddaughter. I've heard. My, my granddaughter, your. What, she, <laughs> it, would be, it would be my granddaughter, your great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. So. Well, what I was going to say is. We're making progress around Jersey here. Joey, that's what we call one of the One of the benefits from doing this. As you know, I was standing on our back porch. We had all the crawfish laid out. Of course, they had these people are from Tennessee. None of my, the three families that came. There was one African American family. Uh, there was one younger, like my kids' age. Then there was one couple about my wife and I's age, and that's whose property I I detected on. Well, I didn't find. I found a couple cool things. So, do I, they have large areas like you? So these are kind, oh, yeah, kind of spread they're out. They're way off. Yeah, from me. I but got you. They're on kind of the same 
mountain from or hill to valley to hill. Yeah, I got you. And so they're on the other side, and uh, so it was great. But they had never eaten crawfish. Huh. I mean, you think we're in Tennessee here, and so uh, it was just like an adventure <laughs> for them. But but it reminded me. I, I was thinking. Of the, I don't know why it kept popping in my head when Jesus fed the five thousand. So who did the crawfish? Reed, Reed. okay, he did the whole thing. Yeah, and it was spectacular. Reed's a great cook. It, he he just, and he had never done. It. I mean, he's been around crawfish sure. bowls his whole life, and uh, his, but this was this his first time to actually do it. He was the man. He was did a little you, nervous. Did you put in any corn and potatoes? Oh yeah, yeah, Phil. It, it it was a smorgasbord of. And like Cole cooked like a huge, or cooked, he had a big, huge salad. Missy cooked some, that somebody had made some bread, so it was. Bread. Well, you're doing remarkably uh, well during the pandemic and uh, and then uh, inflation. You're you're still eating well. Yeah, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but but here's what I was saying: something special happened there. Hey, you're, you're not just surviving; you're thriving. Well, we were on the top of this hill. Did you do and it like, Louisiana style? Dump them on the table. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's why they started taking pictures in front of us. Like, what are y'all doing? They're like, well, we've never actually. I think one, one of the uh, men had eat had eaten because he could peel them. So I had to give a tutorial how to peel them, and all. it's fun for them. They're screaming, and you know, it just, it was, it's fun. But the food just kept. So ever so often, it, it's another dump. You yeah. Know? And they're like, boy, this is, this is just something. They they were. You know, and we prayed together in the tone of, and they were all believers, which was, I wasn't, you know, I didn't care. I was, I mean, Cole was like, invite well, that's the whole neighbor. deal. Yeah, but I just thought, man, this is, when Jesus said, love your neighbor, I mean, it just was a picture of that. It was a, it was a fantastic night yeah. out in the woods, eating crawfish, yeah. having fun. You know, I, I just wanted to like, when you look at the, the dividing because it was it, if you looked at us it was multicultural with different backgrounds mm-hmm. different races and here we are this is not something you legislate as much as you live and experience i mean right. that's why i thought it's the church's responsibility to bring people together and uh, it was it was a yeah, man in the wilderness night. that movie about uh, a, a big bear mauled or some dude mauled him good he's all torn up and he covered himself up with mud and leaves, and uh, he didn't. He was just barely hanging on to life for about a week, two weeks. You know, with a broken leg, a bear just gnawed his leg almost in two. But they left him for dead. The movie just about they left him for dead, and he crawls around. But his first meal, he crawl out of that. He's next to a stream, and he crawled out of his hole and went down and then got in that shallow water. And he looked down crawfish here well he has no food his buddies left him for dead yeah and he's trying to make a comeback but his first meal was a crawfish about that long in this mm. case not cooked just he was there and he caught him he just so he he gagged about three times but his <laughs> first his first meal was a crawfish <laughs> oh. yeah, but he didn't peel the tail he just started eating well he's starving to death starving to death so that crawfish pulled him through you know he tried to reach some berries, but he couldn't get up there high enough to reach them. He tried that. Is this what you watched while Mom was gone? This you yep. watched it this week. But he finally, he finally he made some it. Neighbors that loved him. He started with nothing. Is this was that the same story as the the Revelant or what was it called? The yeah, I don't know, but that was a same pretty, type. Pretty good bear fighting uh, yeah. graphic, but that was fake. It's a I lot mean, like it. Yeah. Man in the wilderness. Well, if you think what this had to do with Colossians, I. Uh, I actually thought because <laughs> I, was wondering, I, I was wondering how you're going to draw that <clears throat> distinction. Well, that was my story. Other than I didn't finish the story about the golf, so I'll go out there. Well, this before all that happened, I throw up a 74. What? Yeah. And I thought, you know, and, and guess what? My twenty t- strokes better than anything you've done since you. And it was a slightly easier course, but it wasn't easy. It, 74, 74, Jason. You know what my, my two sons shot? 74. We all three shot 74. Really? We got there three totally different ways. Yeah. Because most of mine was my putter got hot. Yeah. So I was spraying the ball, 
everywhere, but I was hitting it better than I had at any point. I mean, yeah. I was roughly keeping it in play, but if I got to the green, <laughs> I made it. Yeah. And it was disheartening for them because we had our little competitions oh, going. Yeah. You know, they're hitting the green and basically two putting. Right. Far, they're playing real golf. <laughs> I, they're You're looking scrambling. at me. I'm taking a drop over there out of the hazard, then hitting it on the green and draining a 40 footer, you know, <laughs> like the part. <laughs> And they're just like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's yeah. actually worse when somebody does that. Than if oh, it's just... horrible. Because they should have, because my, my two sons have gotten good. Oh, man. They, they blitzed us. And if us they like... would have putted decently, they they would have broken part. You yeah. know, broken part. They they played way better than I did. But old Jay. Oh, man. Sometimes, found oh, some oh, spirit man. with player. I thought, here's a father and his two sons. <laughs> I'm just I'm Things proud were at of a lot boys. Mother's sore, Day sore weekend. Sore pace down yeah. in here with at my abode. <laughs> so anyway, so I was happy just about that. I mean, it was a worldly, earthly venture, you know, playing golf. You still got to look thought, competitive. You know juice, what? <laughs> what was that story about the guy, Caleb, when he was like, I'm 85 years old and I'm in my prime. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you felt like. But I thought, because I had this, uh, these promotions coming up about the show which i'm excited for and i'm i'm gonna involve the audience if i can hang, hang on let's take a break so jace what's the first thing you notice when you look at a photo of yourself that i've got a lot of hair <laughs> <laughs> and it's turning gray isn't it? it well not my beard's turning more gray yeah, the hair, hair is just i don't know well, some people uh, will say that they notice their receding hairline or their bald spot, which is not you. Uh, but a lot of people do have this issue, and Keeps, one of our longtime sponsors, can help you change that. Uh, so what you do is you reach out to these guys, and they're going to connect you with an FDA-approved hair treatment. Uh, they have a physician there to make sure that everything is uh what you need it to be. So I want you to check these guys out. There's no waiting rooms. There's no pharmacy visits. If you need these guys to come straight to your door at about half the cost. So it's also affordable. So if you have any questions, you can also me message your Keeps doctor 24-7. So um, if the balding jokes are wearing thin, join thousands of guys who have saved their hair. Go to Keeps.com slash door. You're going to get 50% off your first order. So saving money. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. Keeps dot com slash door and keep your hair. Yeah, I want to hear more about that. What is Well, because they I just I saw the the week long promotional deal that I have to do. Yep. And I'm like, man, I need to come up with some talking points. <laughs> Cause you just y'all been on these things. You go to one show to the next, and they ask you all these questions. And so, you ever done that, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just stick <laughs> stick to the scriptures because it basically is the gospel on the front end and how you should behave because of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. But that's I, pretty well all the. Somebody epistles. taught a lesson in our inner circle. It might have been you that I had it in my phone because we, you know, how these. We get togethers, go with the neighbors, and you get to show on about big deer and fish you've called. And but there was a picture that I'd taken of that I was uh, at an event somewhere, or somebody was speaking. It, it could have been Bowles or man Bowles. Mm -hmm. I thought it may be you, but they had a screenshot and it had treasures on earth, treasures in heaven. That was, those were the two categories, mm -hmm. and under it, it had mindset emotional state attitude and disposition was that you not me okay well i, no, I, I, I saw that i i i was at that lecture yeah i took a picture <clears throat> yeah of the but screen. i thought here's my talking point that's it because we spend the whole episode which is turns into you know four or five days of filming it seems like we're looking for earthly treasures which we are but what's what the vein of the show is, is the heavenly treasures that are found during the venture of mm -hmm. looking for lost things. Yeah. And so I'll just give you this because I found a lot of these nuggets in Colossians in, yeah. in what we're reading. Mainly when, you, when we read Colossians 1, 
5 where it said, because uh, he, he had made the point that he had seen their faith, hope, and love, but he said, the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven. So there, there's some treasures yep. that are stored in heaven for us. Right. Well, what exactly is that? <clears throat> so that this, this little chart that I'm fixed to give you explains that. And then he mentions it in verse 12. He says, he goes through these spiritual qualities that, that we grow in the knowledge of God, verse 10. Verse 11, being strengthened with all power, you know, the Holy Spirit, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Well, what is that inheritance of the saint? What is this? Mm -hmm. What are these things? Right. So we kind of imagine what they are. And even some people believe, well, that streets of gold and mansions over the hilltop. I've always viewed that in Revelation where that was kind of depicting us. But even if it was heaven, you're not, well, you would be walking on the streets of gold. You wouldn't need the gold for right. anything. There's plenty of verses that says that God is not like images made by man. He's not like gold or silver. Well, the, I mean, have you ever thought about that? Yeah, well, I've always thought the point is, <clears throat> in when once you're there, the gold is like what you'd walk. You know, that's like asphalt. Well, right. It, 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 <laughs> I mean, well, right. You're actually like, like almost saying, "I'm going to walk on this gold just to show you how insignificant." Exactly. It is. Exactly. If you're excited about going to heaven because there's a street of gold. You're you're totally looking at this wrong. You you've missed something. You missed it somewhere. Yeah. So let me give you the two categories, and because what I'd like to do is we continue through Colossians and, and get into this. There's a passage that we're going to get deep in, which is because you made a few notes mm -hmm. about understanding. Where's that one that says understanding the Lord's will? Uh, where is that at? That's in verse nine. Yeah. So let me read verse nine. It says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you these two categories because this these are going to be my talking points. Not I'm, I'm not going to go through like on a show and say, okay, here's a chart. But in my mind, I'm going to try to get into the weeds of the spiritual versus the physical and what we do. So you have treasures on earth. On one side, you have mindset. Your mindset is, think about it. If you're pursuing treasures on earth, well, you're never going to be satisfied, even though you think you will, because you there's always something bigger, or you... You use it, you buy bigger barns, or right. you compare yourself to what somebody else have has. It, it, there's a there's an unfulfillment there. It's like really rich people. You say, what are they doing? Well, they're trying to make more. Right. They're trying to add a zero. It reminds me of the time I was I went to the LSU when they won their national championship under Saban, and we got to go on the field because we had some special passes. So I went into the press conference right after the game was over. And they said, Coach Saban, what are you thinking about? Right? I mean, you won your first national championship, this first one to LSU since 1958. What are you thinking right now? And he just he looked at everybody and he said, well, to be honest, I'm thinking about how we're going to do this again next year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, literally, it's, you had just walked off the field and his mindset was, that's great. That, that just happened. How are we going to – which explains a lot about Nick Saban. <laughs> you know, but I thought, man, you can't even enjoy it for – an hour no. and already thinking about the next one, which is kind of to your point, Jason. Well, it gets into people like people who win the lottery and, you know, they've done studies that it, it just, it's a whirlwind of emotions that usually it just doesn't end well. Yeah. The, the money comes and goes and, and it just, because yeah, you think that, Oh, this is going to make me happy. But it doesn't. Now, on on the technically, whoever wrote this, I'm sorry, I don't know. I just took a picture of it. 
uh, they had scarcity. Somebody's probably yeah. this list and said, that was my list. Yeah, I know. It was good. <coughs> it's good, though. It's deep. It's Hang on. Good. Let's take another break. Well, unfortunately, Dad, every day we hear about another major corporation that's gone woke, which is the current thing. I wish they'd put some of those back to sleep. Uh, they torment their employees with a lot of leftist propaganda uh, that goes against our country, our traditional values, and even our constitution. Uh, that's why we are proud to support Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative cell phone provider. And trust me, they are the only one. They offer the same nationwide coverage as major carriers. You get same great service, plus you get peace of mind that your money is supporting free speech, life, and liberty. Patriot Mobile has plans to fit any budget. Their 100% U.S.-based customer support team provides exceptional customer support. Patriot Mobile shares your values and supports organizations by fighting for religious freedom, constitutional rights, sanctity of life, and they also have great deals for first responders and veterans. So here's what you want to do. You go to patriotmobile.com slash fill, or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation with the offer code Phil. And remember, veterans and first responders save even more when you make the switch. It's time we support companies that love America, love you, and share your values. PatriotMobile.com slash Phil or call them at 972-PATRIOT. So on their mindset that I put never satisfied, but they had scarcity. And so if you read... Now, which th- line was that under? This is under... Your Treasures on treasure Earth. Treasure on Earth. Okay. So mindset, mindset. Okay. Which is scarcity. The state of being scarce or in short supply, shortage. And because what I deducted from that is you're putting your faith and trust in things that can be burned up or blown up or taken away or you lose or you spend or it, it's a... And look, all these things can be positive. I mean, we work and provide for our family, and you know, we call them blessings. However, you want to view earthly possessions, but even the stuff I'm finding, they're cool, and some of it has value. And but if you put all your hope and trust in that, it's a never-ending. It was cycle. like I just thought about this, Jason James five to your point, verse two: Your wealth has rotted. Moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. Ooh. James uh, five five. Yeah, I had that as yeah. a, as a verse later. So let me give I mean, you that's the other brutal about putting your trust in earthly things. Well, and you, and you have the you have the Matthew six nineteen and twenty one says bir- virtually the same things. Mm-hmm. Don't don't put your your trust in earthly possessions where rust and yeah. moth and destroy or whatever. So on the other side of the bracket, you have treasures in heaven. Well, you have scarcity with treasure on earth. Well, treasures in heaven, whatever it is, there's a surplus. <laughs> you There's a satisfaction because it's bigger Because it it made that transition from perishable or temporary, it is now eternal. Yeah. So whatever that inheritance is, whatever those treasures that are stored up, it it far exceeds any kind of goal that you could possibly have. It's more than enough to satisfy. Yeah. Because it's all eternal in nature, and it's spiritual in base. In that it's things that you can't see. It, it's not in the perishable realm. So it's obviously number one on the list, and there's going to be relationships. That's why you come up with the idea of forever family, the things that the faith, hope, and love that binds us together, right. these qualities. So what do you think about that? I mean, that that's what they had. It's a surplus. It's more than you want or need, but it's on a different level. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I think that would be important. That would be both sides of the coin. One is that there's a surplus, but the other side of the coin is once you have a realization that you're there for all eternity, there's a contentment for us where you're not looking to the next thing. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you don't have that base well, human desire like there's got to be more. There's a realization well, then that this is everything. 
Which gets to the second point, exactly. You have, you've never seen this. I have you not. just fell right in Maybe there. I did. The, maybe which, it was which, my lesson. So that if your mindset is what you're pursuing, are you f- pursuing heavenly treasures? You're, you're going after something way bigger than what you'll find on the earth. Right. Which leads to this emotional state. Well, if you're pursuing the treasure on earth, the emotional state that goes with this never being satisfied, this pursuit of earthly things, you have fear and worry. Yep. I mean, the, the stock market came to mind when I thought of that, because mm-hmm. that is a big pursuit. But that you have the fear and worry, because that thing is the most volatile earthly treasure form on earth. Right. It just is pendulum. You know, people, they panic, you know, and, oh, i got to get out of here and just take what's left. You know, so I can live. It it, it breeds. It's like actors in Hollywood. They're not. They're never content in a great role. You're always thinking about the next role. So in the, the treasure- next movie, the next yeah. whatever. Most people do not think about the realm in which they can be placed. That everything is eternal. Nothing passes away. It's always there. Yeah. Just well, when right when you put your to... per, when you put your faith, trust, love, and hope in eternal treasures, your emotional state is confidence and peace. You lose everything here, so you're like, well, how how are these people? How do they have confidence and peace? They just lost everything. Well, you just think about all the major characters in the New Testament. They didn't have anything. No. Nope. Every, and everything they had was taken away. Even their bodies were beaten, whooped. But why, what confidence they have. I mean, I think of John the Baptist just jumps off the page. It's like he's confident. And yeah. He seems to have a peace about him, even when he had his head cut off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because he's pursuing something that's not of the earth. Their emotional state is not what you think it would be. They're not... They're not, you know, looking around thinking, oh, what are we going to do filled with worry and fear? So you see where this is going, mm-hmm. right? Yep. All right, you want to do the next one? So you have the mindset, you have the emotional state, the difference. The next is attitude. So the attitude for the one pursuing the treasures on earth is greedy. Mm-hmm. That's where this comes in. So, and you have the fear, the emotional state, fear and worry, if you start losing things, yeah. but right. the attitude is greedy because there's a trouble finding contentment, which would be on the treasures in heaven side. You have graciousness and contentment uh, and generous. That's why people who have their minds on the heavenly treasure, they give the earthly stuff because they realize you, that's not going to make you happy, right. and you're never going to be content, and you're going to be filled with fear and worry if you start to lose it. That's right. So on the other side of it, you're like, ah, oh, here, you, you use it. And it doesn't matter whether you have a little or a lot to be generous. We talked about that a lot on the podcast. Exactly. We were very, Dad, you and Mom taught us generosity when we had very little. Yep. You're still generous. Just like Jay's described that, that that was an experience for his neighbors of generosity, the bounty of like here here's the way we here's what we live and enjoy. I mean, they yeah, we that we make. paid for everything right. we shared with our neighbors because we were like this is a pillar in how we should operate. Well, we could have just had our family thing, and it was actually my youngest son's idea. He said, "I've gotten to know some of the neighbors. You you want to invite them?" I I looked up thought. That's a great idea. Yeah. Don't you love it when your kid, when your grown kids have picked up on yeah, the I same? I take no credit for any of it because uh, other than I just financed it. Yeah. Which is fine. That's good. I thought. Somebody has to finance it. This is, it reminds this me is of, the list. It reminds me of <clears throat> the issues you are discussing, the points. If God is for us over in Romans 8, if God's for us, uh, who can separate or who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son gave him up for us all. How will he also, along with him, graciously give us all things? All these yeah, things. What does that mean? All things. Yeah, you get that, it. That's, that's it a again. good verse. It, there it is again. What is? He's given us all things. Yep. It means everything we 
could need that we don't know we even need. And then he goes down and says, who shall separate us from this? He said, nobody. Uh, and all these things, he ends, but I said, we're more than conquerors to him who loved us. And he lists a li- long list of things that come up that scares the daylights out of the human race. I'm convinced that neither death, no, no problem there, nor life, why are you here? Neither angels, demons, present, nor future, nor any powers, nor height, or depth, or anything else in all of creation, what we experience down here, will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ooh. He said, it's, it's, he said, we, someone says, well, you, you're going to be slaughtered. He said, we, we, we line up to be slaughtered. We know on the other side, eternity awaits. Yeah. And you, and it never gets old, and it never with, runs out. With no death at all. Let's, let's take our last break. Well, and I love that passage because it said in Christ there, which is the theme of Colossians, which is the theme of the Bible. Yeah. That in Christ these things take, take place. It reminds me of that. Somebody wrote a quote. I can't remember who that was. But I remember reading it off the top of my head. They had, it went something along the lines of, you know, Jesus had no servants, but people called him master. He, he was not a doctor, but he healed people. He, they had like 10 of those things. Right, right, that right. He had, he had uh, no armies, but people followed him and kings were fearful of him. Yeah, I mean, it was just, and you think about it, he had nothing, but he offered everything. Right. I mean, and, and there's a lot of points you can make about that, but that's really, I think, the what people fail to miss. Because if you just look at Jesus from a worldly point of view, he, he just didn't have anything. Yeah, plus, it, if you just went along, from and an you, earthly, it, right? You, you saw, you. you see an individual poor and downtrodden, thinking that person, you know, has it rough. But if they're reminded of the fact that now they are that one, he's an ambassador for Jesus. They're like, do what? You say, he's an ambassador for Jesus. Yeah. That's who he is. That's, you didn't know that? And they're like, but he's homeless. You're like, ambassador for Jesus. Mm-hmm. You just think about how that goes all the way down to what Jace was talking about, whether it's be armies, the people who follow him. You say, the ones that get it, they, they get eternity. Right. Well, right you could just go down the list. You say, what kind of car did he drive? Oh, you know, what kind of chariot did he drive? And he's like, that'd be a donkey. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just, I mean, that's the equivalent of worse than that thing I was pulling up the hill. But even the donkey was borrowed. <laughs> I no, mean, like, wasn't even his donkey. Did he eat at the finest restaurant? No, he just created his own food from <laughs> thin <Sweet>. air. <laughs> <laughs> and he stuck with bread and fish. Yeah. I mean, of all the things you'd think, well, how come he's not raining down T-bone steaks? I mean, all of us want to get in that position and say, oh, I mean, we want to have this, the finest of fine at these gatherings. When you look at earthly gatherings with the important people who have made the important dollars, and, and you see this experience that they're offering, and you think, well, that is the greatest way to exist on earth. Right. But it's all fleeting. It, it, you, you, you lose it, you lose your status, you, or eventually you get old and you, and you die. But here you have this pursuit of what we do through faith that is way beyond anything earthly. You remember this scene, Jason, uh, Conan the Barbarian, when the, the king... He had him in. He was going to send him to try to get his daughter back. And he had all these jewels, and he was just dumping them out. And he was like, the jewels have lost their luster. The gold has lost its significance. All an old man wants is the love of his daughter. You know, yeah. he had lost the one thing that mattered to him. And he had all these gold and jewels. And, of course, they're thieves. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's his first big role. And they're just looking at it like, this is everything. But it yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Well, that's where I was getting to on this final point is it's like I found – this button from the Civil War is really cool. It's an infantry button, which is the only Civil War-related thing I found on this property, which I'm like, I know there's got to be some other stuff Because that was right in the thick and of I, everything. Yeah, and I was excited there. to find it, but I gave it to him. And 
he was like, no, you, you, you keep that. I mean, you were out there for, because I hunted out there for four hours. <laughs> I said, well, and this is to get to my point on my talking points about what we do when we treasure hunt. Your disposition, which is the last thing. So you got mindset, emotional state, attitude. attitude and now your disposition <clears throat> is when you're concerned about earthly possessions, you want to be in control. You want to control all your stuff. And the more you have, the bigger you feel. <laughs> you know, you're like the CEO of your own franchise. Of and you think about the most the people that we view as the most powerful on the the planet from an earthly standpoint is the ones with the most stuff. This Bezos and uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. They they have the most things. They're like viewed as and they're in. I want to do something about free speech. I'll. I'll spend $43 billion exactly. buying Twitter. That's we're right. enamored <laughs> by these people because look at the stuff. that, And we all put our – look, we can't help it. We, we're we like, well, what would I do if I was in that situation? Because, right. I mean, I usually think I would just buy land. <laughs> I mean, that – what, what can you do with all that? You wouldn't, After a while – You wouldn't buy rocket ships? I mean, and... You can't eat 10 T-bone steaks at a time. You can only just eat the one. Yeah. I mean, but you would think in your mind, oh, I'm going to have, it's going to be better, but it's going to taste a little better. What's funny is most of them have weird dietary stuff anyway, just they're eating tofu and vegan. So, but the (laughs) treasures in heaven disposition, which gets to my point on why when I first started treasure hunting, I was so enamored with the stuff I was finding that I would. I would put them in boxes and I I look at them, you know, I was like, look at all this stuff. And I still have you know, some of it, but something Murray taught me, who's the expert on the, on our show and one of my best friends in the world. The best thing I ever saw him find was a, <clears throat> a Spanish coin, Spanish real. I found one since, but, and it was seven. Oh, all we could see was the 17 on the date, which is just sent us into chaos. We were like, <laughs> dancing around like junior high <laughs> kids <clears throat> and when the homeowners of the old place that we were at they heard the just the carrying on they came out they're like what'd you find on our property they would say that <laughs> but what'd you find and murray immediately i mean we're still in the excitement of the find he's like i found you one of the most special coins you can find on this earth I found you a 1700 Spanish real coin and he handed it to them and they're like, no, you keep, this is what you've been at. He's like, no, I I found this for you. He just immediately went into that. And the word under this treasures in heaven, because you got to think about his life. Here's a man given up for dead. They, you know, they said, you have cancer. They gave him a number. Oh yeah. He had a number. A few weeks, you know, Maybe a few months. That was years ago when they gave him that number. So here's a guy who's who's put his whole faith, hope, and, and trust in heavenly treasures because he's at the end of his road and given up for dead and just keeps <laughs> plugging along. Well, he's not going to. What are you going to do with this coin? He's like, I, here's a moment. He recognized the moment. So the word under disposition, the opposite of in control, is surrender. Yeah. which is basically what we've done and we've surrendered we use our, our things the Lord has blessed us to help other people I'll, I can Thank, post yeah. a picture of this that I took and whoever came up with this can take credit for it and I'll give it I'll give the credit where I was. Well, we always say the original thought is a forgotten source Jay well, we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in the than the overtime because we just you introduced a that's a heavy one there. Well, it's a heavy one, but look, I'll say this, and then we'll see in overtime. This is going to help us when we get to Colossians yeah. chapter three. Yeah. On why how you set your mind on things. Yeah, like I like that. that. I like that. All right, we'll see you in overtime. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.